Hello everyone, um, this video is to run through the practice test for test one um, on formulas and percentages. Um, let's get started. Question one, um, it gives us a formula. It says to calculate an object's speed, we can use the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as, where v is the object's final speed u is the object's initial speed, both measured in meters per second, a is the object's acceleration, measured in meters per second squared, and s is the distance the object has traveled, measured in meters. Calculate an object's final speed if its initial speed was 4 meters. So I'm just going to write down on the side here the values that it gives us. It said that u equals 4, its acceleration, so a equals 2, and it travels 5 meters, so s equals 5. Now my first step, um, like with all these questions, is going to be substituting those values into the formula. So I've got v squared, that's what we're trying to work out, and it equals u squared, u squared plus 2as, substituting my values in, that's going to give me 4 squared plus 2 times 2 times 5, 4 squared is 16, 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20, and 16 plus 20 is 36. If v squared equals 36, then v equals the square root of 36, which is 6. This question was worth 3 marks, so you would get 1 mark for doing the substitution, another mark for calculating the value of v squared, and a third mark for calculating the value of v. Question two. Goods and services tax, GST, is a tax of 10% that is added on most goods and services. If John bought a new laptop that cost $1,200 pre-GST, what would be the GST included price? So we've got $1,200 is the price before GST, and GST is a tax of an additional 10%, so we need to work out 10% of 1,200, then 10% is just dividing by 10, so that's going to equal $120. We now need to add that on to my original amount, so 1,200 plus 120, that's going to give me $1,320. Two mark question, so if you give me just the answer, then um, that's two marks. Um, if you gave me, if you worked out this step without working out uh, the answer, that would be worth one mark. Question three, Sam is training for a cycling competition. He has cycled six kilometers so far, which is 3% of the total length of the track. How long is the track? Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna say six kilometers is 3%. I'm going to work out then, what is 1% of the track? So to get from 3% to 1%, I need to divide by 3. So to get from 6 kilometers, um, I'm then going to divide 6 kilometers by 3, and I'm going to work out that 2 kilometers would be 1% of the track. So if 6 kilometers is 3%, 2 kilometers would be 1%. Now we need to work out um, the length of the whole track. So we need 100% of the track. So that means we want to get to what is 100%. And you can see that to get there, we need to multiply by 100. So we would need to multiply the 2 by 100, and we would get our answer of 200 kilometers. Moving on. Question 4. Selena buys snow globes from a factory outlet for $6 per globe and she sells them for $8 per globe. Due to increased demand, Selena decides to increase her selling price by 25%. How much will it now cost to buy a snow globe from Selena? Okay, so before it cost $8. We wanna increase by 25%. So um, we could do eight times 1.25. Uh, but this is the non-calculator section. Uh, if you can do that without a calculator, then go for it. Um, I'm going to do it 
the longer way because that's easier for me to do without a calculator. So I'm going to say 25% of $8, well 25% is a quarter, that's just dividing by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is $2. And because I'm increasing by 25%, I need to add that on. So 8 plus 2 gives me a new price of $10. Question B. How much profit will Selena make on a box of 30 snow globes? So she's making profit on one snow globe. She's buying it for $6 and selling it for $10. So her profit is 10 minus 6, which is $4. She's making a $4 profit per snow globe. In a box of 30 snow globes then we're just going to do 4 multiplied by 30 and her total profit would be $120. Now question C, um, when I wrote question C um, I used numbers, I used some numbers in this question that actually makes question C uh, a bit too difficult to do without a calculator. Um, that's my fault, uh, so I've taken that out. Um, but um, I will show you how to do it um, and I'll show you without a calculator because there's actually something that's quite important about the question C that it's pointing out here even if the numbers um, are a bit complicated. The key thing here, so your instinct is to look at this and say what percentage profit will Selena make on an order for 12 boxes? Now she's selling 12 boxes and each box has 30 snow globes. So your immediate instinct is to say that is to try and work out how many snow globes altogether and you would say 12 times 30 and you'd work out that that's 360 snow globes um, and then you're going to work out well if she's selling every snow globe for ten dollars then that means she's making three thousand six hundred dollars uh, that's how much money she's getting in total each snow globe cost each snow globe cost six dollars so 360 times six is going to be her total costs and you're going to work out her percentage profit um, that is going to be very difficult the key thing here is that the percentage profit that Selena is going to make on 360 snow globes is the same as the percentage profit she's going to make on one snow globe because percentage profit, because it's a percentage then it doesn't actually matter how many snow globes she's selling it's going to be the same for one as for 360 so her profit on one snow globe is four dollars so her percentage profit is four divided by the cost that she had to spend, which was six. The original price of the snow globe was six dollars. Four divided by six, and this is where it's um, going to be annoying to do without a calculator, but you might know four divided by six, we can simplify that to one over to two over three, which is sixty six point seven percent, rounded to one decimal place. If she's making 66.7% profit on one snow globe, then just to prove this point to you, let's think what would happen if she sold three snow globes. Well, three snow globes, that means that if she's making a profit of $4 per snow globe, it's going to be 4 times 3, $12 profit in total. And how much is it going to cost her all up? Well, one snow globe cost her 6, so times 3 is going to give her 18. So her percentage profit is going to be 12 over 18. And what I want to show you is if we started with 4 over 6 and we multiply both by 3, 12 over 18, that's an equivalent fraction. Those are the same. So that's going to give us the exact same answer of 66.7%. That's the whole point of percentage profit. It doesn't change with the amount of items that we sell. Um, so that's the trick there. That's going to be our answer. Okay, question D. The manufacturer increases the cost from $6 to $6.40 per globe. If Selena does not change her selling price, what will be the percentage decrease in her profit? Okay, so remember, our general rule, percentage change equals the change divided by the original price, and the change is the final 
minus the initial. So here, what have we got? The manufacturer's costs have gone from $6 to $6.40. That means that Selena's profit, if she doesn't change, her, her profit is going to decrease by 40 cents. So profit will decrease by 0 0.40 dollars, 40 cents because it's 40 cents more expensive for her to buy and she's selling it for the same price. So the percentage decrease in her profit is going to be 0 0.4 divided by her original profit, which was four. And 0 0.4 divided by four gives you 0 0.1, which is 10%. That is the end of the non-calculator section of this test. Um, let's move on to the calculator assumed section. Question five, Adina bought a house for $370,000 and spent $50,000 on renovations. If she sold the house, there's a missing word there, if she sold the house for $490,000, what is the percentage profit on her total investment? Okay, so first we're gonna work out her total costs, because there are two things there. The, cost, the house cost $370,000, and then she spent $50,000 on it, which is going to give a total cost of $420,000. Um, and she sold the house for $490,000. So percentage profit is going to be the actual profit that she made, which is going to be $490,000 minus $420,000. That's the profit that she's making, or it's the final price of the house minus the original price of everything that she spent on the house, divided by her costs, or the original amount of money that she had to spend on the house, so divided by 420,000. We're going to use calculator for that. This is going to be 490 minus 420 is going to give me 70,000, divided by 420,000 gives me 0 0.167. So as a percentage, if I want to do that on my calculator, I can multiply it by 100. It's going to give me 16.7%. Question six. There are 200 members of a sports club in 2014. In 2015, the membership increased by 15%, but decreased by 18% in 2016. What is the current number of members? Current here, meaning 2016. So we start with 2000 and then in 2015, so we're going to have a look at what happened in 2015, that number increased by 15%. So to increase by 15%, I'm going to multiply by 1 plus 0 0.15, so 1 plus, so, uh, so 2000 times 1.15 and that gives me 2000. 300. So that was the membership in 2015. Now what happened in 2016 is that number decreased by 18%. So we've got 2,300 and it decreased by 18%. To decrease by 18, I'm going to multiply by 100% minus 18% or 82%, which is 0.82. And that's going to give me 2,300 times 0 0.82 gives me 1,886. So that is the membership at the end of 2016. Question B, what is the overall percentage change from the 2014 membership levels? So again, we've seen this rule a couple of times in this test now. Percentage change is going to equal the final minus the initial, initial divided by the initial, which in this case we ended with 1,886, we started with 2,000, and we started with 2,000. Now 1,886 minus 2,000 gives me negative 114. 
And as we've explained already, so when I work that out as a percentage divided by 2000, as a percentage, that gives me negative 5.7%. But I'm not going to leave my answer as a negative. I'm just going to say that negative tells me that it's a decrease from 2000 to 1886. So my final answer, I'm going to say the percentage change from 2014 was decrease by 5.7%. Question seven. So here we've got our tax uh, table um, where depending on the income that someone receives, this is how much tax they have to pay. So question A says George earned $82,245 in the 2018-2019 financial year. Calculate the tax he must pay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look, which of these tax brackets does George fall into? 82,245 is between 37,000 and 90,000. So George, I'm going to put a little G there for George, falls into this third tax bracket here. That means the tax he has to pay is $3,572 plus 32.5% on everything over 37,000. So the first thing I'm going to work out is how much did George earn over 37,000? And to work that out, we're going to do his earnings, 82,245 minus 37,000. And that's going to give me 82,245 minus 37,000. That's going to give me $45,245. So George is paying 32.5% of that in tax. So to calculate the percentage of, we're just going to do 45,245 multiplied by 32.5%, which is 0 0.325. And that gives me 14,704. Now, in my calculator, hopefully you can see this in the video, it says 0.625, but it's money. So we're always going to round money to two decimal places. So I'm going to say 0.63. That's the tax that he has to pay that's 32.5% of this amount. We now need to add that to 3,572. So his total tax is going to be $14,704.53 plus $3,572, which takes us to $18,000 to $18,276.63. Pepper earned double George's earnings. Calculate the tax she must pay. So double George's earnings is 82245 times 2, which takes us to $164,490. So that's how much Pepper earns in a year. That is going to put Pepper in this fourth tax bracket there, between $90,000 and $180,000. So Pepper has to pay $20,797 plus 37% on everything over $90,000. So same as we did with George, our first step is going to be working out how much did Pepper earn over $90,000. So we're going to do 164,490 minus 90,000. And we work out that Pepper earned $74,490 over 90,000. And she has to pay 37% tax on that. So we're going to multiply that, 44490, multiply it by 37%, or 0 0.37. <clears throat> um, sorry, I wrote that. That should be a 7 there. 74,490. Copied that wrong from my calculator. So 74,490 times 0 0.37 means that she's paying $27,561.30 in tax on that $74,490. We now need to add that, so 27561.3, add that to the 20,000 
$797 that she has to pay. And altogether, Pepper has to pay $48,358.30 in tax. Because it's money, I'm going to round it to two decimal places. So even though it's just 0.3, I'm going to put a zero on the end there because it's what we do with money. Question C. Rebecca paid $8,447 in tax that year. Calculate her total earnings. So we're going to try and work backwards here. Now, if Rebecca paid $8,500 in tax, we're going to look now in this column to work out which bracket she might be in. So if she paid that much, then it's going to put her between this bracket, 3,572. She's above that, but she's paying less than 20,797. So Rebecca's going to be in this third bracket here together with George. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, first of all, we're just going to work backwards. We're going to do exactly the same steps as we did with, say, George, but working backwards. So our last step with Pepper or George was adding on this amount here. So our first step is going to be to take that away. 8,447 minus 3,572 takes us to $4,875. So that's how much money Rebecca had to pay in tax because of that 32.5%. So that means that her earnings that were over $37,000, which I'm just going to call X, her earnings over $37,000, that was this number here for Pepper and this number here for George, that number, when we multiplied it by 32.5%, so if we did 0.325% multiplied by her earnings that were over $37,000, that gives me... 4,875. So to work out what that x is, I'm going to do 4,875 divided by 0 0.325. And that gives me $15,000. So that's how much money she earned over 37,000. So the same way as with Pepper and George, our first step, let's say with George, was to take away that 37,000. Now we need to add that 37,000. So 15,000 plus 37,000 will take me to $52,000. And that is her total earnings. If you want to double check that, you can always work backwards to work out how much tax she would pay. And hopefully you should get 8,477. Question eight. Thomas buys a used washing machine for $145 and resells it for $444 without spending any money on it. Calculate his percentage profit to the nearest hundredth of a percent. Okay, so percentage profit, the same as we've been doing this whole time. We're going to do its percentage change. So we need to do our final price, 444, four, four, minus the original price, or the amount that he spent on it, which was 145, divided by the original price, or the amount that he spent on it which was 145. And when I put that into my calculator, 444 minus 145 gives me 299. Divided by 145 gives me 2.062. Um, and let's put a couple more in there as well. 07. Let's take it all the way to there. Now, people often get confused with this. Um, but it works exactly the same as anything. To change that into a percentage, we're just going to multiply it by 100. So that's going to take us to 206. Now, we need to round it to the nearest hundredth of a percent. That means we need two decimal places now. So if we've moved our decimal place here, we now want two more decimal places. So it's going to be 206.21%. Now, you might ask, how can you have more than 100%? Well, we're looking at percentage change. So to increase something by 200% just means you're going to double it twice, right? So if you increase the price of something by 100%, then you're just doubling it. To increase it by 200% means you're doubling it again after that. So to go from $145 up to $444 means
means that you're more than quadrupling, um, you're, you're doubling and then doubling again, you're raising it by 200% that, uh, the price of that. Um, okay. You know, sorry, that, that was wrong. You're not doubling it and then doubling it again. You're, you're essentially tripling it. So I don't want to confuse you there. Um, you're doubling, you're, you're increasing by 100%, so adding on that original price and then increasing it by that original price again. So um, altogether, you're, if it was an increase of 200%, then you're, you would be multiplying that original price by three. But ignore the last 30 seconds of what I said because I've probably confused you more than I have to. If you understand what I've done on the paper here, then that's perfect. Question B. There is an 8% off sale in a store. Calculate the regular price of an item selling at the discounted price of $946.72. Okay, so we wanna work out the regular price. Now I'm gonna write here, let's say that regular price, I'm gonna call it X. If we had an 8% off sale applied to that price X, then to calculate the sale price, we would have to take 100% minus 8%, so 92% of that original price. So we would multiply that original price by 0.92. That's what would give us a decrease of 8%. And when we do that, it gives us the sale price of 946.72. So here we're just gonna work backwards and we're gonna say therefore that X, our original price is 946.72 divided by 0 0.92, 946.72, divided by 0.92. And that takes me to $1,029.04, again rounding to two decimal places because it's money. Question C, a valuable piece of art costs $2,500. Over the next three years, it appreciates, with its value increasing by 5.2% every year. How much is the art worth at the end of the three years? Now, appreciation is something that we'll cover in more depth in um, a week or two, but for now, you should be able to do this already. So we've got our original price of $2,500. In the first year, it appreciates, so it its price increases by 5.2%. So to calculate that, I'm going to multiply it by 1.052. The answer to that will then be the price of the painting after a year. To work out the end of the, the, the price at the end of the second year, we then need to multiply this, the price at the end of the first year, we need to increase that again by 5.2%. So we're gonna take all of that and we're gonna multiply it again by 1.052. Now we've got all of this, which is going to be the price at the end of the second year. And you can imagine brackets around this in your mind. I'm not gonna draw brackets because it's just gonna make it look more confusing and we don't actually need them there. But you can imagine brackets around this and that's now the price of the art at the end of the second year. So to work out the price of the art at the end of the third year, we need to take all of that and increase it again by 5.2% which means multiplying it by 1.052. Now, because it's just all multiplication, the order of them doesn't actually matter. Multiplication is commutative, meaning that the order of what we multiply things in doesn't matter, which is why I didn't need to put the brackets there. So we can just do 2,500 times 1.052 times 1.052 times 1.052. Um, just double check that I've put that in three times. I think I have, and that should give me $2,910.63. Now, just to preempt what we're gonna do in a couple of weeks, hopefully you can see here that 1.052 times 1.052 times 1.052 is the same as doing 2,500 times 1.052 to the power of three. and that will give me that same answer, $2,910.63, um, which is an easier way of doing it, just preempting what we're gonna cover a little bit later. Question D, 
a refrigerator initially selling for $934 is discounted by 15%. By what percentage would the price now need to increase for the refrigerator to return to its original price? So we've got $934. We're going to discount it by 15%. That means multiplying it by 100% minus 15%, or 85%, which is 0 0.85. When we do that, 934 times 0 0.85, we get $793.90. So that's the discounted price of the refrigerator. Now, what is the actual price drop there? So how much cheaper is this refrigerator now? To work that out, we need to do 934 minus 793.9. And that gives us $140.10. So that is now the price that we would need to add on to $793.90 to get it back up to the original price of $934. That means we need to work out if we start at $793.90 and we want to increase by $140.10, what is that as a percentage increase? So, like always, percentage change, the percentage change, in this case a percentage increase, is going to equal the actual change, which here we're increasing it by $140 dollars and ten cents when I say actual change I mean the value change how much is it how, how many more dollars is it increasing by divided by the original amount seven ninety three dollars and ninety cents and when we put that in one forty point one divided by seven nine three point nine we get seventeen point six five Let's double check. If we increased $793.90 by 17.65%, what would we get? So I'm going to put into my calculator 793.9 multiplied by, we're increasing, so it's going to be 1.1765 and it gets me to $934. Perfect. Last question, question 9. Senge earns $17.80 an hour and receives 9.5% commission on her total sales that exceed $10,000 in a given fortnight. In one fortnight, Senge works a total of 48 hours and makes $11,100 worth of sales. Calculate her total earnings. So the first thing that we need to calculate is how much does Senge earn by just working for 48 hours at this rate of $17.80. So we're going to do $17.80 multiplied by 48, and that gives us 17.8 times 48. She earns $854.40. Now we need to calculate her commission. So if she sold $11,100 worth, how much does that exceed this minimum of 10,000? 11,100 minus 10,000 is $1,100. So she's made, she's sold $1,100 above that minimum of 10,000. So this is now the amount that she's going to be getting commission for. And she's getting 9.5% commission. So 9.5% is 0 0.095 multiplied by 1,100. 1,100 multiplied by 0 0.095 gives me $104.50. Her total earnings are then going to be this number and this number added together. So we're going to do 104.5 plus 854.4 and her total earnings are $958.90. Question B. Senge's job is to sell sustainable backpacks that cost $198 each. How many backpacks? I'm not sure what a sustainable backpack is, but <laughs> that's alright. 
Um, how many backpacks would Senge need to sell in a fortnight in order to make at least $200 in commission? Okay, so we're going to need to work backwards from that process we did in question A. We're trying to make $200 in commission. So that means that the amount that Senge makes above $10,000, which we're going to call X, that amount, when I multiply it by the commission rate of 0 0.095, that gives me at least, so we'll just put it as $200. That equation is the same as the one that I did here, but we didn't know, we don't know this value yet. So I'm putting it as X and we do know this value already, it's 200. So I'm putting that there. That means that X equals 200 divided by 0 0.095 which we put into our calculator and we get $2,105.26. That is the amount that her sales exceeded $10,000. So we need to add that to $10,000 to get her total sales. So 2,105.26 plus 10,000 is gonna give us $12,105.26. That is how much money minimum she would have to make in sales in order to get $200 in commission. So now we need to know how many backpacks is that? So to work out how many backpacks it is, each backpack was $198. So we just need to divide that by 198. And we get 10.6. Now, you can't sell 0.6 of a backpack. So in order to make at least $200 in commission, no matter what this decimal point was here, even if it was 10.2, 10.3, we're gonna need to round it up. Because if you only sell 10 backpacks, then you're not gonna be making enough to make $200 in commission. So we're gonna round that up to 11 backpacks. Um, and it seems like I've made a mistake there because I did not put this into the calculator properly. So uh, I almost got through the whole test without making any major mistakes, but we're gonna just have to do that last little bit again. Um, the working is all correct. I've just put it into the calculator wrong. So 12,105.26 divided by 198, 12105.26. divided by 98, actually gives me 61.1 backpacks. And like I explained before, if you sell 60, if we normally, we would want to round that down to 61. But if she sells 61 backpacks, she's not going to be making enough. She's going to be making just short of what she needs to get that $200 in commission. And we want to know how much, how many backpacks she needs to sell to make at least $200 in commission. So we're going to round that up and our answer would be 62 backpacks. Sorry for that minor stuff up at the very end of the test. Hopefully that video was helpful to everyone. Let me know if you've got any questions.